Welcome to the onboard. Ooh. The meeting. Oh, so for everybody's information, the meeting is being recorded. I hope that's okay for everyone. So uh, welcome to the onboarding session of the Glam Hack 2021. We're doing everything online this year, of course, because we have the big coronavirus still spreading around in Switzerland, but this doesn't stop us from having a really amazing and productive time. So now I need to figure out how to, ah, there we go. What we're gonna look at today um, are a few things. So just rules, uh, Slack, because Slack is one of our main tools uh, the next week. We'll have a look at the data sets, especially the new data sets, which have been provided by several uh, suppliers. We'll look at the program hackathon, just a brief look, because we have a lot of things organized for you, which are exciting and fun. Uh, we'll look at how you can find your teams, the project and the pitching where you can sign up. We'll also have a quick look at the Zoom rooms, um, at the documentation of the projects, because as, or as people who love archiving, obviously we need to see how we are documenting our projects and I'll let you know how you do that. And finally, I will introduce you to the entire team. And at the very end, you're obviously very welcome to ask your questions if you have any. Um, there we go. So rules are very basic, but very important as in any event. When you come into the room, please mute yourself at all times, um, unless we're calling your name. Uh, if we're calling your name, please unmute, unmute yourself or we help you to unmute yourself. Um, if you have problems with the connection, obviously I love seeing all your faces and reactions, but if you have problems, you might just as well switch off your camera. And if you have any questions from this session on forward, you can find us on Slack in the first, uh, or no, actually in the second channel called Help Center. You can ask your questions there and they might be useful for other people too. So just ask them publicly. But if you feel your question might not be of any relevance for anyone else, you can ask um, uh, the one of the team members directly on Slack. If you can't find Slack and you can't uh, write here in the Zoom and you don't know how to get in touch with us any other way, there is always the info at openglam.ch email address. You can write their emails too. And there's a couple of people who have access to that. So we'll try to answer your questions as fast as possible. And of course, if you have any feedback to, for us um, regarding anything, feel free to email us or Slack us or contact us I don't know, via pigeon if you prefer, but just like try to contact us if you have anything. Also, besides the rules for the for the uh, calls now in per se, we also have a code of conduct, conduct which is provided by the um, hack code of conduct. And this is our hackathons are dedicated to providing a safe and comfortable environment and harassment free experience for everyone, regardless of the following. And I'm going to read it out to you just so that I said it and it's clear to everyone, regardless of your gender, gender identity and expression, age, sexual orientation, disability, physical appearance, body size, race, ethnicity, nationality, religion, political views, previous hackathon attendance or lack of, computing experience or lack of chosen program language or tech stack. I think this is all really important. Please be nice to each other. Kindness wins in most cases. And if you still are not sure about the code of conduct, you can find more in-depth information on it at um, hackcodeofconduct.org. I hope that's clear for everyone. So the Slack. The Slack is one of our main tools during the hackathon and before and probably also after. If you haven't signed into the Slack, please do so now. Oops. Uh, you can do so by uh, writing down this link here. And I will da, 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 invite you as well now in the Zoom if I find the chat. Mm, I do not. Can someone of the team maybe copy the Slack link into the chat so everybody can access the Slack and sign in because you'll need that in a couple of seconds as well that your, your Slack sign in for the hack at uh, hack.openglam.ch um, site. Um, our Slack is very simple. 
at the moment. There might be a possibility that we're opening up a lot more channels so you can um, accommodate your, your teams or your topics into it. But so far we have five beautiful channels. One is announcements. This one is only fed by us, the team. So keep an eye on it. Um, we will share important information on it or if there is something last minute, uh, you can find it there. Um, however, it's a one-way channel, so only us can write to you. There's, of course, the Help Center. Write your questions or concerns there. Uh, we will try to help you. The Hack Chat is for everything else, which doesn't really fit anywhere. So you just want to share something which is fun or random, maybe not super relevant, but you can share it definitely in the Hack Chat. In the data sets, we'll be sharing all the data sets or in information on the data sets. So you can go there if you have any questions on the data sets. And 04 is the recreational channel. This is more for fun. You might have a fun meme, or we're going to announce there as well the fitness snack. Anything that is not necessarily super work related can go there. Um, it is more of a calm channel and I'm seeing lots of people signing up right now thank you so much for listening very happy about that um, again if you have any question um, help center or you can ask us directly in uh, person uh, uh, directly in a direct message on slack this is me this is um, uh, Gabriela Simon Leitner Michael and Oleg as well and um, if all help breaks loose you can also ask Beat. Uh, however, he's going to be working on in his challenges and teams, so it is us who's going to be there for you at all times. The data sets. So we have three major sites with all the data sets. Our main one during the last couple of weeks, uh, years, uh, has been this here. You can see it's a, a gorgeous list with all the data sets we've collected so far. The new data sets have a star here in front of them. Um, and all the others are the data sets we've been collecting over the last couple of years. Um, we have also the make open data. Here's a bit more, it looks more organized, but it's the same, it's, it's um, the data worldwide. And we also have this site here with other data sets. I hope no one is texting me right now, but I'm getting a lot of Slack notifications. Anyways, so um, these are the three main pages where you can find all the data sets. However, we have received note of a few more which haven't been published on the site. And those are um, the entire inventory of a museum from up and sale which was bought by a trust in the 80s and they have more or less 750 objects um, accounted for we also have a well-documented crossbow inventory of 150 objects and we have also an inventory of objects that belong to famous people such as cc churchill and napoleon it's more or less 100 objects and um, we also have a list that needs to be uploaded of reproductions of artworks by Eva Epley and photos of the artwork, um, which are more or less 2000 pictures. And those here, you can see the photographs and views from city of Zurich. Those are also new data sets we have now, which you can download as a CSV file, um, but you can also find them on the site. This presentation here, I will also share it on the Slack so you can just access any information if you need it. However, everything is on the sites as soon as this hack, uh, hackathon starts should be posted. Any questions so far? Fortunately, I cannot see the Zoom chat. I think it's, there we go. Ah. Okay, so we have, I think it went too far. Can't go back. Um, no, I think that's right. Challenges. So you all are here to use the data sets during a challenge. And how do you 
set up your challenge. If you don't know, let me show you. So we have the hack.glam.opendata website. This is where you can find all the challenges which have been provided or suggested so far. Uh, and how do you suggest a, a challenge yourself? Well, first you have to, oop, well, I'm logged in already, but let's log in together again. You log in, you set up an account, and this is why I, I asked you to sign up already on Slack because this website here is directly connected with Slack. So you can sign up through Slack. Go in, I allow, because like, and well, the program I think is called Drip Dad, but the Hack Glam site is connected to Slack, so super easy. And then you can announce your challenge and you go, I have a very important challenge to suggest, which is test Vicky Glam. And then you save it. Well, you put in more information, of course. And once you save it, you post it, and then you can find it on the challenges. It does take a couple of seconds sometimes. There we go. And there you go, you can find your challenge. Please provide your contact information. If you have sources or data sets, also provide them in your challenge. And also, um, we will be sharing your challenges. Uh, so during the hack, at the beginning, we will have a pitching session. And there you will be called and you will have to pitch your challenge uh, idea. Um, yes, I think that's all to write a challenge. It's very easy. The only thing you have to do is think a bit in ahead so you have an idea. We already have, I think, 18 challenges suggested, uh, which is quite a bit but we're also a lot of people who have signed up for the hackathon. So hopefully a lot of teams freshly working on interesting challenges. We also have, of course, the program hackathon and uh, lots of pre-events for you. Uh, of course, this today is considered a pre-event. It's the onboarding session. On Tuesday, we have a workshop night. Um, and a workshop on base registers and controlled vocabularies in the cultural heritage field. You will find all links to these workshops and events um, either on Slack, we will post all the links. You can find them also in the confirmation email you've received from Eventbrite. And if you still don't know where to find the link, just ask us, we will send you the links. Um, the, the Tuesday workshop session is first a short presentation of audio segmentation of opera recordings by students of the Bern Fachhochschule. And then comes the workshop on bass registers. You can join either session if you like. Of course, you're welcome to join both. Um, and then two days later starts the pre-event on Thursday, the 15th of April. And we start with, with a talk on um, the Spanish flu uh, by the project Open Museum. Uh, we will have then a talk on the reuse of rare books uh, which by, by project Graph. Then we will have object recognition entity extraction on Wikimedia Commons. And the last talk is getting started with IIIF. Uh, to then be concluded by a panel discussion with Michael Gassa and Leonel Walter and Matthias Bernhardt on From Prototype to Product. This will take more or less 45 minutes. Again, you're welcome to join, of course, the entire afternoon, but you're also very welcome to just join certain talks that interest you the most. This whole evening is then topped by a spoken word performance by Swiss spoken word uh, artist Lisa Christ, uh, which you are also very welcome to join. And the evening doesn't end there. If you are really into performing arts data, there is a workshop by Lodepa, um, by Lodepa from 7 to 8.30. We are accommodating that workshop so that our friends on the east coast of the states can also join us so it's going to be an international workshop as well um 
think that's good like this. And then we go to the main event of everything, and that is the hackathon. We will meet at nine o'clock on Friday. Uh, you can obviously check in a bit earlier, but everything starts at nine o'clock sharp and we will not be waiting a lot longer for people who come a bit later. If you need your coffee, you can have it in front of the screen. We will start obviously with an opening session. Everybody introduces themselves and some icebreakers because this is the second time we're doing it online and we have learned a lot in these last 12 months now of being online and we'd love to create as much of a humanly experience as possible so you get to know everyone and you also have a great time uh, then we'll have a bit more than an hour to listen to all the presentation of the challenges you'll have two to three minutes to present your challenge suggestion and uh, you will be called on your name so there is a list we have you all have access to that list and uh, you can um, then pitch your, your idea for a challenge. We've also uh, organized some fitness sessions for everybody so that you don't just sit in front of the computer screen and get a bad back. Um, one fitness session is at one o'clock until 1.20, and then one as well in the evening, just after everybody had a chance to present their projects if they feel like it. The overview of Glam Hack projects at 5.30 on Friday is not, um, mandatory you can come if you want but if you prefer working or continuing work you obviously can do that but we will also discuss discuss that on friday when we're seeing each other definitely again and then you're free to go and you're free to work for the entire night until the next morning when we see you again at 9 30. Uh, there we will have a quick briefing session uh, just discuss um, how, how everybody's feeling, if anyone needs help in anything specific. Um, and also, depending on the size of the hackathon, because we're not entirely sure how many people are participating in the end and how many teams will be created, we need to accommodate for the final project presentation. So they might take a bit longer than what we've expected. We hope we can close everything on time, but there is a possibility that it might take a bit longer. So please accommodate for that as well. So far we have over a hundred um, applications. So there's a likelihood that it might happen. And we ask for your forgiveness ahead of time. So how do you find your teams once we're at the hackathon i'm everything i'm telling you now i might tell very shortly also during the hackathon but just so you have had a look at it beforehand or you can already fill it in if you like uh we have a, a spreadsheet a spreadsheet of course uh where we have written down all the challenges and the people who have suggested them we will in this order exactly go through the pitches so Beforehand, you know already when is your pitching time during the first session in the hackathon. If you want, you can already put in here suggestions. Um, don't forget to put them in the drip that in the in the hack dot open glam ch hackathon website as well. Um, I'm transferring all the challenges over here, but here you see who suggested what and uh, what the title is, and you can then once the hackathon starts you can um, choose your team you can write down your name so we know who is in what team and also who is in which zoom breakout room um exactly so you can also put your challenges on the hack glam open data site as i said before and please 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 never forget to write your name down because otherwise there's no way we can find you so the zoom rooms this is obviously um really important you need to know where to find us uh these are all the links already in in this site here so i will download it as a PDF and you can click on all the links and you can have access to the Zoom rooms. We have one Zoom room for the entirety of the hackathon. However, for the other events, we have slightly other um, links and you can find them all here. During the, during the hackathon, we have one main conference and each team will receive a breakout room. You can access those breakout rooms individually um, during the entire hackathon. 
I think that's good. Unless anyone has any questions. No? Good. Documentation of projects. This is really important. Uh, how do you document your projects? This is completely up to you. You can make a PowerPoint presentation. You can take pictures and videos. We love those. Uh, you can write a text. You can make a podcast about it. You can share your code. You can do all these things to document your work. Just please document it in a way or another. What is important, and never forget to use open licenses and uh, on hack.glam.opendata.ch is a Creative Commons CC BY. That means it's op all open license. Um, and to document to document your projects, please, uh, you can either use the makeopendata.ch wiki page we have or any other wiki on the web. You can use the Google spreadsheet I just showed you. You can use GitHub or GitLab, or you can just create a website. It's all completely up to you, um, but just tell us where the link is and you can do that as well on the spreadsheet. Actually, we were much faster than I thought. So we are coming uh, to the team that made this all possible. And this uh, project is owned and created by Bert Estermann from the BFH. He is also in the call if you have any questions. And everything has been made possible with the amazing help of Gabriela, Nicole, Simon, and Michael, and of course, Oleg as well. And you can see me here at the bottom. Um, I didn't have a pretty picture, but also you're gonna see lots of my face. So that's okay, I think, if you see me swimming underwater. Um, you can reach out to any of those people uh, on Slack or on email. If you have project related questions, you can reach out to me or Gabriela. If you have uh, tech related questions, please, please reach out to Oleg. If you have data related questions, you can also reach out to Oleg or to Beat or to Michael or to Gabriela and to Nicole as well. They're all there for you if you have any questions, but a lot of them will also be working on challenges. So maybe don't go to me first if you have any questions, it's the best. And this all was made possible by our wonderful friends and sponsors, of course. Uh, first of all, Wikimedia Switzerland and also the Hasler Stiftung. And our friends at InfoClio, uh, the Swiss National Bi Library, the Schweizerische Sozialarchiv, the BFH, the Museum for Communication and the National Museum, which also kindly have delivered either data financial means or other information for us. So thank you so much. And now you can ask your questions. Ah, and don't forget, we have a hashtag as well. You can see it in my background. It's the hashtag GlamHack2021. You can share it on Twitter, on Facebook, and also on LinkedIn, and they're connected. And I'm gonna stop sharing my screen now. So if you have any questions, you can reach your hand for. No questions. <laughs> I'm gonna leave it just like here for a couple of seconds. I mean, I'm in no rush, but um, because apparently I'm a lot faster than I thought. Um, yes. Someone's lifted their hand. Uh, Darren, I was just wondering how many people signed up for the hackathon? So you mentioned something about 100, is that correct? Yeah, you, I can check for you in a second. I think we had 160 something applications last time I checked. Wow, Wait, amazing. I think it's a lot more, hold on. No, it's 160 around that for the actual hackathon. Wow, that's for great. For the actual and hackathon? Good job. 
and we're hoping for a few no-shows so we don't break all the <laughs> all the presentation sessions because it yeah we'll still have some we we'll still need some time for each team right to to present uh, on on Friday night and on Saturday night. So more ideas are welcome, Elias. If you have any more, just um, put them down as a challenge. <laughs> It definitely but yeah, bring bring your friends as well. It will be cool. We will we'll manage to handle all this, all the crowd. I th I think it's it's going to be the biggest um, hackathon we had so far. We have 173 applications for the general hackathon. Yeah, first time ever that someone wishes for no shows. <laughs> Any other questions? Hey, um, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, awesome. A uh, quick question. Is there a maximum number of participants per project or what's the recommended number of people that you would say? I think it's best to go with four or five people. Um, if it's fewer people, sometimes the dynamics will be a bit particular. Maybe it depends on who, who's working together. And we also have made experience that if it's more than six or seven people, you really need someone to take care of the, the coordination of all these people. Then you really need a, a project manager or some, some kind of uh, a person taking on that role. Otherwise, it's, it gets a bit um, chaotic. Okay. But sometimes there's um, projects run by one person only as well. Okay, thanks. I see Thomas smiling. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> uh, what we also recommend is that if you have uh, very similar project ideas that you think about maybe merging two projects if there's not a big crowd uh, around both of them. Mm -hmm. I think someone stopped my camera. <laughs> Gabriela, thank you. <laughs> Sorry, I tried to pin you, but uh, <laughs> there is something that's gone wrong. <laughs> no worries. To get, get you back. I can't access it, actually. Are that's there any it. other questions? OK. If there are no other questions, I mean, like if you feel too shy to ask your question here in the, ah, ah. if you feel too shy to ask your question in the crowd, don't fret, you can always ask your question anonymously on the Slack or via email or in the help uh, center, which is not that anonymous, but you know, maybe you're shy to talk in front of people. Um, but I definitely don't want to stop you from running into this fresh, wonderful, sunny, warm Friday evening. No, 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 wait. If they oh. don't have questions, we have questions for them. Oh, we have questions. Don't you remember? Yeah. We want to know about your challenges and your ideas. Especially the know. ones that are not yet on, on drip that. <laughs> I know, Darian, that you want to enjoy the, the sunny night, but yeah. No. <laughs> Starry night sunny evening yeah so what are, what are Funk, your uh, ideas Funk and is, challenges i feel adrian Funk wants to say something then you should turn on his microphone yeah i need to is everybody uh, muted everybody is muted but i can't unmute him I can unmute most people, but I couldn't unmute him. Gabriela? Mm, me neither. Uh, well, <laughs> well, I can ask you to. Do you get a message uh, to. No, stop he's muting? unmuting. Ah, there we go. Yep. Okay. Oh, Someone raised his hand. Yeah, hello. Um, uh, 
this if you want to, to to know our uh, challenge so i can present it if if you want to know if that's the the, the time now to present the challenges well, I, th I think it's a good moment to just share our ideas, maybe get some feedback. Um, the official challenge presentation will be on, on Friday morning, of course. Okay, then I can um, present uh, our idea, uh, which we have. Is that okay? Definitely. Sure. Go ahead. Okay. Um, our idea is um, that there, there's a book about Zurich in, in uh, time lapse. It's uh, really famous and it is expensive. You only get it uh, in the aquarium bookshops now. It's from Thomas German and it's called Zürich in Zeitraffer, Zürich in Zeitraffer, Zürich in time lapse. This is the book. There are two, uh, two of them, two different uh, time periods. And it shows always Zurich in the time, for example. This was uh, some years ago. We have a little film. If it's, uh, I show, I, I show you the film. It's it's easier to to present it like that. That you see what actually is um, the the book about. So I have to find out. And you're how joining us on I... behalf of Zentralbibliothek Zürich, is that right? Yes, of... yes, it is. Uh... Can you share your That's... screen or? Oh. <laughs> This is from the Roman castle. You see the, the Roman uh, buildings here. And now it's going to the, to the Middle Age. Now we see the Johnson Garden. So this is, this is the scientific work. And uh, now the idea is to convert that into a 3D model. And the, my uh, idea was that at the end, it looks like um, as if you get something like Google Earth. When you make it 3D, it looks like that. But that's the, the current picture. So this is how the current uh, Zurich. And ha it, it, it should not be uh, such a, a elaborated like that. So it's, it, it should, could be easier if you have uh, on, uh, some buildings over the time. So the idea is how to make a, a, a prototype of a data model, which, which we can have the terrain over the time because the Terra is also changing. You see the Johnson Company was coming, um, some rivers were straightened uh, or diverted, uh, places were built, uh, the lake was filled in, Berkeley plots was coming. So this is also a time, uh, a time function and how to make uh, the, the buildings which were um, placed here with the attribute of time. So it existed from then. And the idea is that you can make, uh, for example, a drone flight through the ancient Zurich and it's uh, underneath um, the surface is always changing over the time. You can say, okay, this drone flight is about 2000 years. And you go, maybe some things uh, could, be, could be great because now this, 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 the things only uh, exist in this um, in this book, and it's only one perspective, and it's always two, uh, two dimensional. Um, I stopped the 
sharing. Cool. Thanks a lot yeah. for sharing. And um, we have found some so some data sets, but it's not there. It's not actually what it's it's not. Uh, we have to find a lot uh, out about uh, existing data sets already. Some topography um, maps are free now, um, free to use. Maybe there's something already here to use. Yeah, questions? I can see Aspasia has unmuted herself. Is the question there or? Yeah, there was just a comment by Saro Pepe to everyone. We have here at the bots, bots, don't know exactly what it is. A very good reproductions of the whole book in high resolutions so we could share, Saro. It's the Baugeschichtliches uh, Archiv, Archiv Zürich. Zürich huh? Yes, so, was, yeah. so they have tons of uh, historic images and uh, so it's, I think it's an offer to join two teams. I have a question. Anybody else like to share their idea? Uh, Beat, one question thought? came in by Twitter. Uh, okay. Just um, <laughs> maybe you can help me out here. Uh, Swiss art research, uh, is this also taking place during the Glam Hack 2021? Workshop on base registers and co controlled vocabularies. Yeah, that will take place on Tuesday. On Tuesday, thank at, you. At half past five. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to answer that. Thank you. Any other ideas or comments or? Elias has his hand up. Can we uh, request to the host, can we set everybody in a way that they can unmute themselves to talk? Well, actually, we can. You can. OK, perfect. Not everyone. Go. I don't know why. Not everyone can do it, actually, because some have Aufhebung der Stummschaltung anfordern. So that's mean maybe you have on your own setting you have, I cannot be unmuted by other people. I don't, I, I suppose, I don't know. Okay, Elias, can you, I can't see you, but if you want to say something, say something. Oh, I'm sorry, I just was not lowering my hand. It was- um, Ah, okay, <laughs> that's a mistake, okay. <laughs> Gregory? Anybody else would like to pitch something to maybe um, draw other people's attention to their projects or ideas? Yeah. Gregory wants to talk. Hello, everyone. Hi. Um, so I'm Hi, Gregory. joining from Canada, and uh, I'm just, just entering uh, the beginning of our challenge, which is to continue our project from last year's Glam Hackathon, which is called Culture in Time. And this is basically uh, a simple a calendar um, using uh, past and future productions to browse uh, available metadata on performing arts productions. And our goal is to actually discover new sources of data this hackathon and allow uh, many sources to be added to this calendar so that we can uh, experiment with uh, loading production data, possibly with different data models, and seeing how it can be uh, federated together. So we hope to uh, add um, several Sparkle endpoints, uh, if we can discover good ones. So that's, that's it for now. More, more cool. coming. Thanks a lot, Gregory, for sharing. If there are any questions, go ahead, or maybe we'll have some other ideas.
For whom is it the first time uh, that you're participating in a hackathon? Ah, uh, there's a few of you. Okay. Do you have any particular questions, any uh, un uncertainties uh, you would like to address here? Or do you have anything you would love to do during the hackathon you'd like to share with us? I think I have to ask I think people. They're shy. Like, <laughs> yeah, they're very shy. Maybe just tell us who you are and where you're from. S M K B U T. Yes, you with the flag in the back. Yes. Yeah, I have to change my name. That's not my name, actually. S M. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I'm Tabea. Ah, yeah, from Basel. Yes, from the exactly. Museum. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah, so tell us about your data sets and what you're planning to do. At the well, the I am joining uh, from the Museum der Kultur in Basel, which is the largest anthropological museum in Switzerland. And in the museum, I am responsible for the European department. So we have actually a, a large collection with objects from all over the world, but we will provide data on the European collection. So those are folkloristic items from all over Europe. It's the first time that we're like publishing this data at all. Um, and cool. my goal or my, I mean, my ideal would be that um, someone or uh, like a team came up with an idea how to, how to, um, see in which times, which geographical areas were interesting for collectors. I imagine that like geopolitics and changing scientific interest had a large effect on where people collected items that came to Basel. So for example, when the Iron Curtain fell, did this have an effect on the collection or can we see like a rise, I'm sure that there is a rise on items from the Balkans, for example, in like some, um, some time. So those questions would be very interesting for us, but we cannot an answer them like this, so. Have you already posted your challenge? Yes, I have. Okay, it's cool. It's called so... like the spatial, uh, sp something with spatial and museum. <laughs> Perfect, so you have found already. Uh, your way then yes uh, thanks a lot for sharing uh, if anybody has questions just post them to the chat then I move on to our friend from Thun Ar Ar Arbor or Arbio how do you pronounce your first name Arbor Shala hello guys do you hear me yeah Good, okay, um, thank you for the invitation. Um, my partner is um, Garusha, but she's not here. Um, that's a bit sad. So uh, Garusha and I, we wanted to um, make a web application about the uh, Romansh language because the Romansh language is the fourth language in Switzerland and we are from the Fachhochschule Graubünden. Um, yeah, what shall I say more? Um, yeah, that's for me personally the first time that I'm uh, on the glam hack. Uh, for Garusha is um, the is the for her um, oh my English is so bad sorry. It's her second time I think. The second time yes. <laughs> Yeah, I remember um, her from last year. She was the one who was walking during the entire introduction session. Ah, yeah, that's uh, <laughs> that's her signature move. So, <laughs> yeah. So um, we will be excited for next week. Yeah, thanks for joining. It's great. Then uh, Melanie Lerch, I think you also were among those who were joining us for the first time. Yes. Where are you from? 
Um, I'm from the ETH library from the Rare Books and Maps team. And um, we have uh, many things on ERARA that we would like um, to start a project with. So our interest is also a little bit in the direction of um, Basel, I just thought, because we, are, um, we have many full texts and we have also many um, publications by professors from the ETH from the 19th century. And we would like to figure out if there's a way we can like extract all the places that um, uh, are mentioned in these publications and to find out if there were changes in, in, um, in their focus, what, what places they um, research, did research or were interested in. So. Sounds interesting. And thanks for joining. Um, I'm, I'm really happy also that we have so many uh, people joining us from the ETH library. And I think uh, Central Bibliothek Zurich, I've seen a few of them as well uh, signing up over the, the past few days. So I hope that uh, some of your challenges will uh, gather uh, quite a crowd. Now, I don't know who else was among those um, who wanted to out themselves as uh, newcomers. I I think, yeah, yeah. Adrian Funk, have you joined already uh, in an earlier hackathon? I'm not quite sure. No, it's the first time. The first time, and, where um, are you from? I'm really curious and it, uh, it's funny. It's, uh, I think it's the first time since a long time that someone called me shy. I'm not shy at, uh, no, really not. I'm just curious and, and I'm really curious. Uh, I had hackathons in real events, but uh, in the virtual uh, yeah, conditions, I'm a little bit uh, skeptical and we will see. And uh, I'm looking very forward uh, to the two days in, uh, in a week. I'm a... Uh, Actually, in a, I'm in two challenges uh, uh, that I brought me in in the in the time lapse that uh, Misha just uh, announced a few minutes ago, and in the Sankt Gala Globus uh, from uh, uh, both uh, topics are a collaboration between. Uh, the Central Bibliothek and the University of Zurich, where I am from. And uh, cool. as I said, I'm looking forward to it, but I'm, I'm really a blank paper. Yeah, we'll, we'll uh, surmount your skepticism. I'm quite sure about that. <laughs> Thanks a lot for joining. Uh, now I've seen before, Jelke Josen, do you want to tell something about yourself? Hi. Um, Where are you joining us from? Belgium, Antwerp. But I work in cool. uh, Mechelen at Sempert, which is a center for uh, music and oh, performing yeah. arts heritage. And I'm in charge of uh, applications and all things digital stuff there. But I've only recently started working there and I've never done a hackathon before. So I'm quite nervous about it, but I'm hoping to your colleague of Bart Magnus, right? Yeah, I know him. Yeah, but he's like on a technical level out of my league, I feel. So I'm very curious as to where, where if it's going to be possible for me to, to like contribute on a technical level as well as on a creative level or mm -hmm. something, because I have a background in programming cool. from university, but never done a hackathon before. So very nervous. Mm -hmm. but, very happy Are you to be going here to join well. us for the Lodepa workshop? So, sorry, I keep interrupting you because I think there's a little time lag. And so, are you going to join us for the Lodepa? Uh, workshop yeah, that's my that's my intention. I put it in night? my calendar. Yeah. Perfect. I'm looking <laughs> forward to having you there. So, yeah. All right. Cool. Oh. Then we have Simona Doniva. I think you're also here for the first time, right? Uh, hi, yes. Well, I've been participating in some hackathons before, but a while back. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm super 
uh, I love art and culture, so I thought, and I'm also like a technologist, so I was really happy to find this hackathon and to join. Where are you from? Um, I'm originally Bulgarian, but now I work in Zurich. Ah, you're in Zurich right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Welcome. Thanks. Then we have Barry Sunderland. I think I haven't seen you before either. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a well-seasoned uh, hackathon participant that I've done one before. Um, so, but this will be my first time uh, taking part with the Glam Hack, uh, and I'm working at ETH Library Lab. So I'll uh, see. I might join another team and help support, or uh, we have a couple of ideas that we might possibly and um, do, but haven't decided yet. So I'm looking forward to the pitching and the the team creation, and uh, we'll see how it goes. Welcome. Yeah, thanks. Then I don't know who, who else would like to say something. Just turn on your camera, maybe. Otherwise, I think we'll slowly slowly start thinking about wrapping up. Any remaining question? Um, actually, there's a, another question, or still the same question on Twitter, basically. Um, the question is, how do you actually sign up for the uh, the workshop, that, which is going to take place next Tuesday? And I think we have to figure it out and uh, get back to those people who are interested in that directly. I think you probably have to to uh, sign in for the entire uh, pre-event program, and then you should be able to get, um, or you, you will get the link, um, or we can send you the, um, the, uh, the respective Zoom link directly, Oliver. Don't worry about that. I have absolutely. one last announcement. Oh, sorry. Yeah, absolutely. Like everybody should have gotten all the links for the entire program already. And yes. uh, if there are any further people who are not signed up yet, they can just sign up and normally they should get the links, I believe. Everybody who signs up gets a link via confirmation email from Eventbrite. So if you didn't get an email, just check your spam folder as well. But I have Otherwise one. contact us. Yeah, or you contact us. And there's just like one last request. I'm repeating myself, but I saw so many people signed up for Slack, but we had um, quite a few more actually during this onboarding. So if you haven't done it, please sign on on Slack so you get all the information uh, you need during the hackathon and before and after as well. But now, Beat, can we let them into the sun? Sure. Okay. <laughs> no further questions. <laughs> um, well, it's my pleasure to have seen all your faces and to meet you more deeply in the next couple of days and weeks. Uh, thank you so much, Beat and Michael and Gabriela as well for joining us during this call. And everybody of you also for joining and learning and keeping curious for the next uh, hackathon. And it's uh, my greatest pleasure to leave you into the fire abend and have some wonderful sun time as well. See you next okay. week. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, everyone.